Do you know about your hell? Do you know about your body? Do you know what to do and how to do it health-wise? Can you live a healthy life? Can we have healthy children? This is not a Ebola is a final virus named after a river in Zaire, its first site of discovery. This final virus is usually fatal and it affects monkeys, apes and humans. The Ebola virus is spread through close personal contact with the person who is infected with Ebola. Oftentimes, infection in previous outbreaks have occurred among hospital care workers or family members who were caring for an ill or dead person infected with Ebola virus. When a person becomes infected with the Ebola virus, the virus enters the body and begins to multiply. The virus can travel in the blood to almost any part of the body, including the liver, spleen, pancreas, thyroid gland, lungs, kidneys, skin, brain. After four to six days on average, symptoms of Ebola can begin. The period between the transmission of the virus and the start of Ebola symptoms is called the Ebola incubation period. The Ebola incubation period can be as short as 2 days or as long as 21 days. before you eat because bacteria get trapped in the palms of your hands just from touching, shaking hands or whatever it is you do with them. When you visit the toilet, it is important that you flush before and after use. It might be your personal toilet but you can't guarantee what happens there when you're not there. So see to it that you flush your toilet at all times. Doctor, please, can you take us through the consequences of poor menstrual hygiene? Like we talked about before, at this you know, stage, the puberty stage, that's when most girls start the menstrual, you know, the menstrual cycle, which is a normal period, um, event that occurs every month, and it's in a cycle. It's a period of you know, like one to seven days. It varies with different individuals. Right. At this period, the girls are meant to take a bath more often you know we said morning and night if there's any more opportunity they can you know take a bath 
um, more than two times, but two times is ideal. But what's essential is they must make sure that they change their towels regularly because the longer the towel stays in, the longer it, it gets stale and it can introduce, you know, foreign bodies into the system. And you know, when foreign body things that are not meant to be there gets in the system, it, it gets you prone to infections. These infections are normally called urinary tract infections. They lodge through, you know, the private parts and then they go into the system. They cause a burning sensation. They can result in, you know, um, um, discharge, you know, which can be foul smelling. And if you don't treat it, you know, because a lot of girls will now keep it, you know, as a secret or they just think it's normal that maybe because they didn't change their part, you must see the doctor so that you get treated. If not, it becomes something more permanent that lodges into, you know, the reproductive tracts that I'm sure you are aware of. Mrs. George, can you take us through the process of menstrual hygiene? Yes, let us take it from the physiological nature of the woman, the okay. way the woman is made. Okay. You know, it's made us in such a way that um, if care is not taken, we are always very easily prone to infections. Wow. That, is, that, is, that is there. And that is what we women should actually always yeah, take note of. We, okay. we are very prone. If you look at even the emergence of all these diseases, even like HIV, you will say that it's for, it is the woman that is, you know, easily, you know, mm -hmm. infected. It is not because of any other thing, but the way we are physiologically built. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once we know that, um, we have that at the back of our minds, I think it will help us a long way. But I think basically one thing we should, those things that we should be looking at is, as women, when we are going to use the toilet, whether, uh, if, if we have the, if, if we have the, uh, we are with all, or if, if we are so endowed and you have your personal toilets, it's okay. okay. But where we do not have our personal toilets, because majority of us may not have the luxury of having our own personal toilets. For we as girls and as women, when we want to use such toilets, I think we should endeavor to clean, it's you know, okay. with clean the top of the, of the, of the seats, you know, with disinfectant, you know, sort of, before we actually sit down. Or better still, you know, some of us take along those uh, tissue papers that you want to roll on the top, you know, for you to, to actually, you know, sit down. So it's, it's very, very important to ensure that because sometimes when you sit, you know, this water, mm -hmm. you know, the water in the closet actually, you know, come up and all the contained germs and when they heat, you know, they can actually go in through that, uh, through the vagina. So it's very, very important that we make sure that wherever we want to use, it's very, very clean. Practice basic hygiene. Keeping the house and environment clean and maintaining good personal hygiene practices can be of great importance in prevention of Ebola virus. I would like yeah, to okay. ask the doctor, for the guys, any consequence if they don't uh, mm. maintain good personal hygiene? Yeah, basically, like we've said before, they would have body odor okay. because they are over activity, they will produce more sweat, so they must bathe regularly. And there is another thing that happens to the guys. At this age too, as the women are doing the menstruation, they have something called, in lay terms, it's called a wet dream, but it's medically, it's nocturnal ejaculation. In the course of sleeping at night, they can have some dreams that would now make them, you know, produce something from their, you know, private part. So if they're in the habit of dodging from bathing in the morning and in the night, it will get dry on them and then they start smelling. So they are supposed to make sure that they take it seriously, that they must bathe. And if they indulge in sports like, you know, the football and all of that, when they get back, they should shower again. And they must use the right deodorant, like we've said, okay. because you have to block it and then release it at night. After you shower, it would breathe, like Mrs. George has said, you open the pores. But in the morning after bathing, you must block it with deodorant so that you don't have body odor. So that's what they have that is similar to the menstruation. Okay. They, in the wet dreams, they must bathe. So they Thank you smile. very much. A round of applause for our guests. <laughs> one last question before I go to my audience. I'm sure you have one or two questions to ask. But before you do, let me ask this. Hands are one of the major and primary method of getting diseases and bacteria. Could you tell us more on this, please? Yeah, like we've said, and the state health educator has promised us, she's going to show us, you know, how to, you know, okay. do hand washing. Hand washing is one of the most, 
cost, well, effective preventive ways of preventing so many infections. Because if you don't wash your, like all what we've been saying, menstruation, blah, you have to wash your hands. If you use the toilet, you have to wash your hands afterwards. If you want to eat, you have to wash your hands. And when you finish, when you cough, when you sneeze, when you're around ill people, you must always wash your hands. When you're about to go into a place where there are newborns, there's babies and stuff, you must wash your hands before you carry them and all of that. Because the hands transport a lot of germs that we all take for granted. That's why we uh, emphasized on it that your nails must be kept very short and clean. In fact, you can use a nail brush to make sure you brush under, to clean under the skin. Because there are lots of organisms that lodge under the nail beds. So if, you do, if you're not careful, you just start using. And then we encourage and implore you that you should use cutlery pieces. It helps to prevent, you know, all this introduction of the germs that the hands naturally um, carry. So at least if you use cutlery pieces, you would prevent, you know, introducing infections to you. There's also another thing called threadworms that it lodges in the, you know, in the intestines that's in the system. So basically you can carry it and it leaves under the nail birds in the hands and around the anus and the vagina. So you notice that it's also called pinworms. A lot of people, you see them scratching their bum and all of that. Mm -hmm. When they scratch the, you know, the anus, the anal area, the eggs of the organisms can also lodge under the fingernails. Wow. So if you're not careful, you are, you, wash, you are eating without, you know, washing your hands, you are introducing it again back into your system. So the eggs lay eggs in, I mean, the, you know, what you're taking in, it will now lay eggs again in your system and it can thrive in your mm -hmm. stomach for six weeks. That causes abdominal discomfort. Wow. And then when you lay it out again, when you know, it continues its own cycle, and then you start itching wow. again. Wow. Commonly, you see it in little children. That's why we make sure that immediately you wake them up in the morning. The first thing is you should make sure you wash their hands and you take a bath. You should discourage them from sucking their thumb because they would have scratched in the night and then they introduce it. So it keeps on going. So these are ways that we too we can you know, prevent it. When we encourage ourselves that we should always wash our hands, we'll prevent diseases like cholera because that one too comes. And like she said, you know, the feces, that's the poo, it has a lot of organisms. So if you're cleaning and you don't clean properly and you leave the toilet, you just start eating you are introducing all those organisms in you. So hand washing is something that, you know, it would prevent so many diseases that we can't even exhaust. Washing your hands with soap and water is a more effective way of preventing against the Ebola virus, germs and bacteria. Hand washing has a role in preventing the spread of the disease. Regularly washing your hands with soap after visiting or taking care of Ebola patients along with several other measures to help prevent the spread of Ebola virus. Thank you so much, Dr. Mrs. George. We've been able to learn a lot from our guests in the house. Please, a round of applause for our guests. <laughs> Let's have Miriam come with water as Mrs. George takes us through proper hand washing. Thank you so much, Miriam. Yeah, thank you, Miriam. So just like we have heard from uh, Dr. Adeliki about um, the inexhaustible diseases we could catch from not washing our hands, so it is proper for us to know how to wash our hands because majorly some of us will just get to the tap, put water there and go away. Some of us, we do what we like, you know, and majority of the times we don't get away the germs, which is not, um, you know, good enough. So there are those magical moments that you need to wash your hands. We must stress that. And she said it, and I would also want to stress it again. That number one, when you visit the toilet and you are out of the toilet, please wash your hands. It's very, very important. I'm sure you will listen to all those things that we've said about you know, that place. Number two, when you want to eat before and after eating, it's also very, very important you know, to wash our hands. When we have touched anything that is dirty, or maybe you have cleaned your house and so on and so forth, they are, those are some times that we should always wash our hands. It's very, very important. It doesn't take us any time. Just about two or three minutes, even 30 seconds, we are done with hand washing. I do it in 30 minutes. We do it in 30 minutes because we have learned how to do it. But actually, you can do it in 30 minutes. How do you do it? If you want to wash your hands, you need water and you need soap. Those are the two basic things that you need. 
Where there is no water, there is no proper hand washing. Where there is no soap, there is no proper hand washing. Okay. Please take that message back home. If our sisters and our junior ones want to wash hands, even our mom, tell them. They said it's soap and water. No soap, no proper hand washing. So if I want to wash my hands, particularly if I want to, if I'm looking at preparing food or something like that, we are only allowed to have our wedding bands on for those of us who are married. All other rings that we put on, we need to remove when we are doing that. Okay. Because we need to wash up to, up to our wrist. So it's only the wedding band that is allowed. So we can leave that on. So how do you start? Can I have the water open? The first thing you do is to remove all those things I have said. Your ring, your wristwatch, your and, and bangles. And then I wet my hand. That's the first step. I wash, as, as, you know, wet my hands with water. And then I have soap. It doesn't have to be this. It can be any type of soap. It can be the soap you are using to take your bath at home. Okay. Any kind of soap will do. Okay. So what do you do? Okay. In 30 seconds. And for you to know it's 30 seconds. What am I going to do? I'm going to wash palm to palm. That is rubbing my palms together. Okay. I will wash in between. Okay. That's something we should do. I turn this one on top of this. Okay. And I wash. That is palm to back of hand. I do that for the second hand. Wow. Palm to the back of the hand. This, my thumb... I rub it in here to make sure, because she was talking about jams, lodging, you know, those places. What do you do? You do it like this. I do this one again and do this. I rub everything together. You can see that there isn't much soap. Maybe my hand is very dirty. But in 30 minutes, you can do that. So there used to be a song that we sing for at least 30 seconds to ensure that we have used those 30 seconds. And it goes like this. Wash your hands well each day to so keep jams away. Wash with soap and water and be healthy always. Can you join me, please? Wash, Wash your, your hands, hands well each day to so keep germs away. Wash with soap and water and be healthy always. Okay. Wow. Thank you Thank very you. much. A round of applause for Mrs. George. So you dry your hands. With a clean towel, you can see it's a very clean towel. But better still, if you don't have a clean towel, you can leave your hands to air dry. Within a few seconds, your hands are dry, even if you don't have a towel. But ensure that the hands are dry before you go on to other activities. Okay. You understand? Practice basic hand hygiene. Wash your hands frequently using soap and water. Regularly washing your hands with soap along with several other measures to help prevent the spread of Ebola virus. We're still on HealthWise and we've been discussing personal hygiene. It's time for question and answer segments. Any question in the house, please? If you have any questions, signify. Okay. Can we have your question, please? Thank you very much, Ma. I'm Onola Moses from Lagos State College of Health Technology, Yaba. And my question is, as regards personal hygiene, care of the skin, what is the relationship between deodorant, perfumes, and creams and the likes with cancer? Hmm. I'd like her to elaborate on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good question. Yeah, thank you very much, Onolako. The, the relationship between the deodorants and the thing. Like uh, Mrs. George mentioned when she was talking, that the skin glows not because of the creams we use, but because of the food we eat. A lot of people indulge in using some creams that contain mercury and hydroquinolones, like she mentioned before. If you tend to use this kind of creams, what it does is that it um, now takes away the protective covering of the skin, and then now the skin, because that changes the color, they are commonly referred to as bleaching creams. So what it does is that since it has taken away the co protective covering on the skin and with the ozone layer depletion and all of that, the skin is now in contact with the direct rays of the sun. This gets you prone to skin cancers. So that's why we are advocating that you don't use those kind of creams because they're the ones that get you to have skin cancers. The de deodorant... What we were saying is that you should make sure that you use deodorant to, you know, clog the pores because the pores need to breathe. So you don't use deodorants all day long and all night long. That's why we're saying that when you bathe in the night 
at least you don't need to use a deodorant. That way, all the pores are open and they will be able to breathe. So all the sweat that you do overnight, it doesn't matter. You can get rid of all the toxins, you know, the collection of everything you've done, the sweat and all of that overnight. And then in the morning, you take your bath. As against if you are now clogging all the pores from the morning that you've used your roll-on, you've showered in the afternoon after sports, and then after bathing at night again, you clog the pores. That won't let your skin breathe and then you can now keep in the toxins that you're supposed to get rid of. So if you do this one, as in that you don't use it at night, I think that can you know, help us prevent the skin cancers. Next question, please. I'm Shubha Lulua Damlari from Kilem's National College, Magodo. And my question is, can hand sanitizers be used in place of washing the hands? Mm, good question. That's a very, very good, good question. question. Good question. I would let Mrs. George take that. Yeah. Sanitizer is also good. But it's not used in the place of soap and water. Sanitizer is majorly, you know, allowed in the, in the healthcare setup, in the hospitals. Maybe the doctor is going in, you know, for surgery after washing with that soap and water. So further make sure that there are no germs in their hands. The doctor uses, you know, sanitizer again. It's never used to replace hand washing with soap and water for you and I. <laughs> Welcome to the precaution segment of HealthWise. The spread of Ebola virus disease can be prevented in a health facility by ensuring that all health facilities have emergency preparedness plan for disease outbreak, training health workers on how to identify and handle a suspected Ebola virus disease case such as designation of an area for isolation of suspected and confirmed Ebola virus disease cases. Referring all sick persons with any signs and symptoms of Ebola virus disease to the isolation area until the disease has run its course or to the nearest Ebola virus disease diagnostic or treatment centers immediately for medical attention. Observing strict barrier nursing principles while caring for Ebola virus disease patients such as Limit the number of health facility staff and visitors in the patient's room Wearing protective clothing like face masks hand gloves, gowns, and goggles before entering the patient's room, washing hands regularly, limiting the use of invasive procedures and reducing the number of injectable medications, safe disposing and disinfection of personal items, instruments, and equipment used in carrying and treating Ebola virus disease patients such as syringes, thermometers, beddings, clothing, cups, plates, spoon, ETC, use of safe bearer practices, Hope you had a nice time. Bye for now. We've come to the end of today's episode, but I will not leave without saying a big thank you to the audience I have in the studio. On my far right, I have students from Lagos State College of Health Technology. Thanks for coming. And students from Caleb International School, please put their hands together for them. Thanks for coming. And to Downsall School, thank you for coming. And of course, for the pioneer members of this project, I say a big thank you to members from Lagos State Ministry of Health. Thank you. And finally, to my esteemed guests, thank you for coming. I am so, so grateful. Thank you. So we we'll see you same time, same station next week. <laughs>